Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, this is February. No, this is March 9th, 2024. <laughs> at 12 o'clock. Well, March the 12th. Oh, well. Okay. It will be April. <laughs> Um, do I have a question? Okay. Second argument. All in favor? Oh, an invocation and pledge of allegiance. Uh, would you like me? Sure. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Dear Lord, we do thank you again for uh, who you are. We thank you for the beautiful weather, the beautiful creation around us that we can enjoy. Uh, we thank you for uh, life. Uh, we ask for wisdom, for the decisions made in this meeting. We ask for grace to, to love you and to love our neighbors ourselves. So bless us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to have a bold was number three. We're visiting the wall then. And I'd also like to make a couple of announcements. I think it was a good evening. Motion to approve the agenda with those changes. I so move, and I will second that. Favor. Aye. Um, approval of the February thirteenth council meeting minutes. This included the the um, public hearing. As well as our general motion to approve. All in favor? Aye. Uh, financials. Uh, seeing y'all have all had time to look over the financials, um, the taxes for February was four thousand seven hundred nine hundred dollars and nineteen cents, and I. Uh, Jim reminds me to mention that we had opened up a hundred thousand dollar CD for the general fund. So we took a hundred thousand out of the regular general fund account and opened up a, a CD for 90 days. No, seven months. Seven months. And we are still waiting some funds from yes, taxes. We have not brought the tax money. Um, for January, we're still waiting. I think it's about forty thousand dollars, and then for February, we had uh, four thousand. So I have not brought the funds. January. Is that an anomaly, or is it like usually that late? It has been running late. I had okay. to call um, Jim. Actually, had to call um, because we had one for. Seven thousand and one for eighty thousand are two the months that we have the most income for taxes. And I had to call. You had to call. I called. Uh, what's the issue? Is it just well, they have someone new that's I don't uh, know, okay. but I don't know that I don't I don't know that yeah I guess she's maybe is, she's just behind. Is it different than it has been in the past? Yeah. It used to be a long time. We get it though, don't we? Okay, I'd like to <laughs> remind the board of our ethics statement. Um, please let us know if you have um, any conflicts. And yes. also a reminder of taking the ethics training, please 
take that. And, no, we don't we actually it. we actually looked that up this morning, and uh, it's on the website, the school government's website. It says that it's going to be available in June. I think the League of Municipalities has a term, um, but it looked like when I looked that one up that we'd have to pay for each one of you individually. With the school government, in the past, I've been able to pay one fee, and then you can all go in and pay it whenever it's convenient for you. The two hour already taken my ethics through the Southwest Commission. I'll provide you with that document. I just and don't you, printed it out. You may have done it through the week. All right, old business. Um, update on the water tank fence. And Bela has talked to several different agencies and she cannot find any that gives us a requirement to have her that's up there. More uh, spec. More yeah. specification. Yeah. Neither. Yeah. <clears throat> Provisional water quality. Uh, you talk to them. We know what you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I called the ladies for the week. Um, and they gave me a number and suggested that I call them. And so I called them, talked to them, and they referred me to the cash flow regional. Um, lady and with the DQ. And she said it is a recommendation. It may be something that they highly recommended um, for risk management or risk assessment. But there is no requirement. She did not have any requirement for it, and therefore she did not have any record of the letter for it. So the DQ does not require it. Can we make one more phone call to Randy? Randy Wells. He's a high speed public <coughs> water guy. He knows us. He seems to know what he's talking about. So we if we don't have a requirement or a specification for what it is that we gotta build, we don't need to be putting barbed wire around our water tanks. Um, I took the time to read from the Homeland Security website, the water critical infrastructure and key resources sector specific plan as input to the National Infrastructure Protection Plan, May 2007. It was 120 pages, so I told you that Kevin, our Keith also read I'm ready to. Um, they considered a town a very small community water system with population under 3,300. Uh, looking at our risk assessment, we are very low. And uh, we, I could not find anywhere where there was an actual recommendation of security by fencing the water tanks. So we'll make those. Leave it alone. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> make that one phone call. Uh, update on the website. Um, taking over the website, uh, we were unable to get a response from the person that we thought was going to help us with the website at uh, Western Carolina. So I've done all the changes to the website. Um, there's still some other things that need to be done on the pages that deal with all the minutes. Uh, those need to be cleaned up, but the majority of other things have been updated on the website. So that's still work in progress. Phoebe uh, Bradley has also been working on it with me. So um, new business. Budget workshop dates. We had a big, uh, oh, I'm sorry. All of us have gone a lot. You know, we've discussed this you know, for a few weeks now. And we have three local residents who have agreed to the same advisory group, Roger Carlson, Chris Bradley, and Eric Reese. So, what I'd like to do is make a, a motion that we talk to our attorneys. 
That's town approval motion for Michael Carter to serve as liaison to the town council regarding research and development options and making monthly reports to the town council. Town staff will assist in a survey of current internet providers and will assist in any Zoom meetings that is necessary. Second. Discussion. Can you hear us? Some folks speak louder than others. <laughs> so, so let me, uh, Mayor, can I chime in? Uh, I, I think the effect of um, what Jim did was to um, certainly task someone to go out, collect information, and bring it back to this board. It is not a formal committee in that you're not creating a, a committee per se. You're not appointing members. Uh, and therefore, all the, the traps of public meetings and public records uh, can be avoided. It's still a, a, an important task someone being that liaison going out with, with that information but it's certainly an easier way to do it and not have to worry about crossing the t's and dotting the i's about public notice so that sounds good yeah and rogers already got us um some good ideas and we direction we got a motion we got a motion we need to vote a second and, and it doesn't preclude it well it doesn't preclude the town doing extra in terms of providing out notice to people you know participating you know sort of gratuitously providing out this information it's just it doesn't have a legal obligation attached to it which is important Um, we gotta allow Roger to speak or well, after we'll the motion. Okay. Uh, well, I second it. Only favor. Aye. Aye. We allow Roger to speak. Well, you can do it on the public comment. Yeah. That'd be nice. Well. Report after public comments. Let me, uh, I might call up Jackson to see where he said, point of whatever. You have from me a memo outlining the process. I think you've all had a chance to read it. You got it last week. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to be sure that that memo becomes a part of the record of this meeting. So as we move through these steps, you know, don't be a surprise because it takes a lot of steps to get to the end of the day. May we add that to our notice? Thank you, Kayla. Thank, Thank you, Roger. Uh, new but um, business, the budget workshop days. Workshop no. Okay, I'd like to try to schedule a budget workshop one for the end of this month, two in March, and then have the public hearing in May. Yeah, wait a minute. You said one. We are in March. Yeah. You said okay. one. That was my confusion. One in, but in March, two in April, and one in early May or mid May. Before our regular. Public hearing. No, we don't like to have the public hearing around 15th of May. Oh, okay. But it really depends on what y'all's schedule is. And if you have your calendars, then you might turn up some days. I am I'm not available on May 3rd to the 10th. Sorry? May 3rd to the 10th. Okay. And I believe we may on the March 28th. Have a financial class. Um, if any of the board members are interested in, in going to the financial class. State presented at the level. Do 
Hawaii with 29. Oh, yes. What's the best out here? Not here. No, Easter Week. That's true. It is Easter Week and that's how it's going to be. When at the end of March. March of 29th, right? The whole week. I'm sorry. Say that again. That last week in March. Are you gone the whole week? I'm gone from the 27th through the 30th. So. Oh, you still have, you know, you have. Know, you know. What about the 25th and the 26th? 25th and 26th will work for me. Good. 26th of March. Yeah, yeah, that should be good. Okay, so do you want to do the 26th? That's on Tuesday. That works. March 26th, and what time? Yeah. And then April, you want to do two in April? Well, mm -hmm. it was set two dates. We may not need to say it. So the meeting is on the night. 16th or April. The tax is filed today. And then the Saturday. He's working in April. Y'all, this old man is kind of slow. Now say the April again. April 16th. 16th. So far. Okay. The new. Yeah. Well, that's it. End of the month. We get everything from the middle. It's not the end. Okay. What about the 30th? You have the 30th? I'll be gone. Well, how about the 24th? Maybe travel on Wednesdays. So the 23rd. I'm good. I'm good. People. March the 26th, April 16th, and April the 22nd if necessary. Right. All right. Um, second item in, under new business is the Golden Leaf Grant. Uh, after our floods in um, January, it became apparent that we needed to do a little bit more of flood water mitigation. They were still offering Golden Leaf grant. So I went ahead and applied um, for the grant to work on the area on uh, Manahara Trail and Terrace, as well as an area on um, Thunderbird. And Another area that comes from Black Bear Trail down to Thunderbird that's coming across through the forest. So I've submitted that. We got our best uh, bids working with Scott Hatch uh, for excavation and Aldrich Brothers for um, paving of those places. We will be um, trying to take out undersized culverts and replace those with larger <laughs> culverts. Uh, we'll be cutting one road to replace the culvert. I think we're adding a culvert down there on the Anahela Terrace the tra uh, trail. And um, so I managed to get it in at 11.15 on the day that it was due, <laughs> and I had to redo it on the Monday before uh, because we had just received Scott Hatch's uh, quote. 
um, we came in at about forty-four thousand um, dollars, a little over, compared to Aldrich Brothers, that was at about one hundred and thirty-five plus thousand dollars. So I think that uh, Scott Hatch will come in really good since he does all the excavating and the majority of it is excavated. We'll have to discuss things with the property owners um, adjoining, but we'll see. Uh, they will be reviewing, get back with me, and this may go before the board in June for a decision. All the work is to be done for our next fiscal year. That's, that's that report, okay. Uh, planning board request. Can I go back a second? Oh. Um, let's see if we can set an eight from the final hearing in May. Okay. Gemini, look at the uh, 15th of May. It's May. That's too far off. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> can we tentatively? I think I can do that. That's fine. That's okay. Can we set it for the 15th? That's what need to move it. Okay. For the public hearing. And then y'all can vote on the budget in June. So we have to have a public hearing in May. And if y'all will vote on the budget of the committee. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, the herding cats part. Yeah. Oh, okay. Planning board request and Hanger will report. Um, I'll stand up here because I don't think I project a lot. So anyway, uh, I wanted to update the council on the planning board activities. And uh, we, uh, during the end of last year, we had three meetings. We had a uh, variance hearing in June, and as well as trial one in October. And in September, the planning board met to address the uh, repeal and rewrite of the ordinance. We last met on February the 19th uh, at the request of the town council to take a look at the ordinance for any changes. During that meeting, um, it pretty much uh, evolved into us doing a survey. And the reason for that was the planning board, along with the uh, our town attorney, were hand in hand in writing the ordinance. And so just to let us only to just be a part of identifying what needs to be done uh, doesn't make sense. It should, we should have resident input. So I wanted to let the council know that this is where we're heading. And uh, you know, if you have any, uh, any disagreement with that, just let us know. The planning board will be meeting, um, our meeting will be Friday at one o'clock. And so uh, that's when we'll pick up the issue again in the survey unless the council has any problems with it. We did a survey before uh, when we were developing the lane stream. That was a long, long, arduous thing to do. Uh, to develop the questions, we worked with, work with other communities and their surveys, we got them out. And when they came back, we did the analysis and then developed the plan. So we like to kind of do something a little bit different this time. Uh, and I've not spoke with my board members. We'll talk about that on Friday if they're in agreement, but I'd like to look at getting a professional company to kind of help us with this. Now that does not come without cost, and I can't say what that cost is going to be right now. I don't think it would be, uh, uh, it would not be right for me to throw out a, a cost right now. But the reason that I say that is uh, we might need to, if you're in agreement, we might need to do a budget amendment to get that done. Um, Looking at the basic steps of working with a professional company, just a few of the steps that we're have to do if we, if we go this route is to identify the companies in the area that do this kind of work and uh, let them have some input into uh, the survey that we would have. This would help us plan the work and at that point, hopefully to give the council a budget estimate. Uh, we need to do some background work. We need to gather uh, previous relevant information, reviewing uh, comments that have been received before. I think we've had two public hearings. We have one public hearing where comments were uh, made available. And then at the uh, planning board meeting last fall during the refill and rewrite, there were a lot of folks who made comments, and I think those comments need to be reviewed uh, to see if there's any foundation 
or anything that we can uh, do to address those. Uh, we also need to decide what questions that we need to have answered. Hopefully, uh, the company that we would uh, contract with would develop a survey of questions. Uh, thinking about how that works is we would give them a list of objectives that we want them to done. And then they can take from that the questions that need to be set out. And we're thinking that, uh, or I'm thinking uh, that this could be done electronically instead of going through the whole mail out process. And for those uh, for those residents who uh, don't have you know capacity, we could then uh, 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 survey on it. Um, also, uh, engaging community. Um, Community support would be good work that you, I'm thinking, I haven't talked to the board yet, about maybe working with a local contractor and uh, that sort of thing once the analysis comes in so that we can see, uh, identify for sure the changes that need to be made. So if the council is in agreement, um, I'll present to uh, the board on Friday the suggestion of yes, going ahead with the survey and secondly to uh, look into having a contract with a professional company. Um, but this process comes time though, and I would estimate the final recommendation probably would not be made available until the first quarter next year. I'd just like to mention that sound you just heard was a premium gas truck going down there. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, I hope you have good bricks. <laughs> um, you're saying for the fiscal year or for next year, 20? January, January 2025. Okay. And, and that might be an outside estimate uh, because it's going to take time to find a company and uh, uh, and then to more with getting the questions going. It's going to take time <laughs> for the emails uh, to be sent out, but a decent response time needs to be given for the residents to do the response. Analysis is really onerous. Uh, we had to do the analysis ourselves last year. Uh, Bill was primary one to do that, uh, but it took hours and hours and hours. So if this company would do this for us, and of course we would have to be made part of that, uh, that's very helpful. So probably not until January 25, uh, but probably before. Did you? Uh... Did you talk to our uh, legal guru there who is involved in writing the statute? Mm -hmm. Maybe he has uh, suggestions or some. You talk about Craig. <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> Wait, Craig. Craig and I have not. Potential consultants yeah, were doing uh, it. Apparently referred to as a guru, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll hold my legs and try to be that for you. Uh, um, it, it's the, the survey is the best, is always the best route to go when you're looking at a comprehensive sort of insight on, on rules and regulations because someone may have an idea that you never thought of, or may have experienced a problem that nobody thought of. And so, no, it, going with the survey route is, is good. I, I think you've got to take this in stages that I, I wouldn't engage any consultant or anybody until after you've done the survey work and see what it says. Um, uh, because there may, it may not be that you need some major steering of the ship change, you know. So um, I would just take it in stages uh, and start with the survey. I think that's a great idea to have it professionally done. You can do one walk in your family or Something. I don't think it would really cost a huge amount of money. It's just that I'm reluctant to say what that might yeah. be because I think very well be wrong. So but I think they would be <laughs> so you would have uh, so you'd have a postcard um, that would you know you wouldn't want to ask everything of the sun so you would try to 
you know, if you could do a monkey poll, monkey survey, or whatever of everybody have emails, uh, and then back that up with a card that mimics the same questions, um, you're just prompting people to say, here, here is what we're looking for you to provide to us, so that they can drop by comments and writing, they can email. You're just trying to prompt them to think. Um, so I think a, a monkey survey backed up by postcard. Uh, that has, or, you know, something small that has three or five questions on it. So are you saying to look at Monkey Survey first? First. And then I understand that they kind of got formulate like questions and, and everything and then bag it up with a, a postcard based on. And, not, and, and I may, you know, you obviously don't have, you're not New York City and you're not, mm -hmm. you know, you're not other larger communities. So it may be that you, that everybody has email. Um, my dad, if you, if my dad was living here, uh, good luck on uh, him responding, uh, via email. Um, and so I think you could, if you feel like you have the bulk of the people that you can do this monkey thing, then I think then posting, uh, posting on the website, maybe, Posting a sign that directs people um, might work without having to do uh, a, a mailing out a postcard. Because um, there's a cost, uh, obviously, to stamps and all that jazz, right? So but if you think you can get most of the people by putting your arms around them via the internet, uh, and then you can put a couple of well-placed signs to direct people to the issue in the website, Probably, that might be good enough as the first shot at getting most people. Okay. Yeah, I know it does need to be kept simple, and I'm not real familiar with Monkey Survey. I've been on their, I've been on their site, but do they also do the analysis? No. Well, I think I think it will. Um, if you're just trying to prompt people, then you could you could direct them to post comments somewhere. Um, you're just trying to get their attention, right? Uh, so uh, in, in the most cost-effective way possible. Um, but I, I, I've just recently been doing monkey polls and they're, they're certainly a lot, they're very easy. Um, I'm not saying this will work for y'all, I'm just saying it may be the good entry level tool. You just need to research it. Because um, I don't think you want to send out a, a big question here to everybody. Um, that's just overly complicated. Well, no, when I was on uh, you, and you could also you could always invite people uh, as a workshop uh, where you invite people to come and give you comments uh, to the planning board. Just so you're collecting information. That's, that's another way you can do it. Good. That way, um, people can actually go and read the ordinance and highlight certain parts of it. And, and that's that's a big thing too, because I'm not sure the level of understanding of the ordinance that a lot of residents have. I mean, that would be the same for sure if I hadn't worked with it. And so I think to uh, kind of put the light on that and let them begin to kind of understand a little bit more. If they need to, sure. and then they would be able to have comments. So, yeah, we have anything else to add? Thank you again. Um, number four, Anderson Smith and Will White. That was Will White. Um, <laughs> PLLC contract. We did sign a contract for uh, these are our auditors to um, do our audit for this year. It was approved by the local government commission. Ready to go? Yes. Um, number five is the guard shack. Sure. <laughs> and. Um, and there's just uh, there, there's just some rot 
uh, around the door and around a window and various things like that. It's not imminently going to fall down or anything like that. Nothing has to be done immediately. But um, just to bring, to, like, if that's something that you want to last, it would be good to begin to look into, um, you know, what it would take to, uh, you know, how the rock got there, you know, and obviously takes it and such. So. You got an idea of how extensive it is? Is it, uh, you know, are we at the beginning or is it like <coughs> asleep? Or? I would, I mean, you never know. With, yeah. With you open it up. And you stuff. But I, I mean, I really poked and prodded it around and it seems fairly minimal at this point. It's one window and then, uh, and then the door. And so how much under the, I mean, I can't look under it, so I don't know. But I can right. jump around a little bit and kind of feel what it feels solid. So, so I would guess pretty minimal. Probably changing out not just the door, but the whole frame of the round door. It, and <clears throat> threshold. And maybe just, okay. yeah, I, I don't know. Um, so, and then we'll need to repaint when we're done with that. Oh, well, yeah, after you fix the red, white, and blue because it's an election year. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not going to get into the red, <laughs> white, and blue. <laughs> I like red, white. <laughs> I want to get skinny on work day. What do you mean by the box down? Yeah. Put a bunch of things down. This is like, you know, you can't fix it or get somebody else to come in. There are our repairs. Yeah. Now that we don't have to pay for a fence, I make a motion that we, uh, what, we, we give him some, some we'll go ahead on this. I mean, that sounds rational. Right. Right. Motion on it. Yeah. And, in doing things like that for 30 years, first thing you need to do is have somebody come out and assess the expense and say, you need to replace this or you need to do the siding at eight inches. So I think we need an assessment. So you need a technical we'll estimate of yeah. areas of yeah. concern. Yeah. And, you know, it can be, you know, carpenter guy around here, I'm sure. Can tell you, hey, you need to replace this frame or whatever, so that we know. And I'm sure that we do not want to let that thing go away. That's an icon of this town. The problem with getting an estimate is you can't get in there to see the damages until you start taking it apart. Yeah. You, you can get a pretty good you'll get to like a view of it, though, you know, because you, you stick around with a nice pick, you can pretty much figure out how much you've got. But I mean, I'd rather have somebody say, hey, you know, this is going to cost you a couple thousand bucks or it's going to cost you $10,000 before we say, okay, let's fix it all. Mm -hmm. Or we, we scrape it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just here. Okay. Can, we, can we informally, you know, have Scott ask around, say, somebody come out, take a look at it, and poke around? Before we start making something Some real painter, formal, we don't know much about. The painter guys typically do that kind of work where they yes. trim and stuff like sure. that. So some of our painters can give you a quick. So ask around. It's not trim, it's more of a trim. I know that. Yeah. 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 Trimming the leaves. Just a couple windows. guys come out and take a look. I'll try. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, request for a comment. Does anybody else want to make a comment that did not sign in? Now we had some people come online after the meeting started. She's not Susan Robin Susan Robinson. Okay. Anyone else? <laughs> Um, I'm going to wave, Benji. I'm not going to squawk. Yeah, okay. this, I don't think it's going to take nearly three minutes. Um, I just want to remind everybody, this is citizens, council members, the public comment period is kind of a sacrosanct constitutionally protected moment that taxpayers are allowed to speak to their representative government. It, I have been witness to, and I have, you know, misbehaved myself on occasion, where someone takes their public comment 
I'm not talking about like a discussion we're having, like, a, you know, we're having a debate. I'm talking about the actual framework of the public comment. That is a time where people just say, look, I'm a taxpayer, I'm a citizen, this is what I believe. I would request that everybody, townspeople, all of us, don't step on those people by making follow-up questions, making statements, giving a, a bit of an opinion. That's all fine in a debate space, a discussion space, but not public comment. There are North Carolina towns, small towns that actually uh, have regulation that state nobody is to say it's just public comment and afterwards it's thank you for your comment or next you know next next commenter i think that would help us all only reason i bring it up it doesn't bother me to debate but i've had conversations with folks that they they're a little nervous because they don't want to be challenged right out of the gate I, I, and I, I and and again because it's a constitutional right I mean, we can all get in here and just, you know, have a cage match debate. That's fine. But the public comment is just for citizens to be able to say what they need to say without being challenged. And that's, I, it's kind of bothered me for some time. And I know we're all, you know, exercised about our opinions and feelings. And I'm certainly as guilty as anybody. But I'm going to try to behave better and respect because I didn't realize it was such an issue for some people. And I've had more than one conversation with folks that they just don't comment because they don't want to be challenged. And I said, that's that's not a good thing. We need to encourage involvement. And that's that's all I got to say. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Chair. Two issues. Uh, with the planning board stuff and input from the, the community. I mean, there's no way that that could be done if we're Working under a public comment section of these planning board meetings with the treatment of open windows. So, when we do have planning board meetings and we're going to work on this zoning, <coughs> no way should the time be restricted for anybody that's going page by page or whatever. Um, and then the cigar chat. Uh, previously, we, we had what we called, you know, Shake the Shack. Thing it was local residents who got together and we went in and repaired, removed and repaired a bunch of stuff. There was some damage that we saw there, like a little bit of rock behind the door and stuff. But at that time, you know, you, you almost had to take the whole floor out in order to get, get it repaired. I I replaced the uh, threshold in the door with a pressure treated wood. So I think this is all old stuff that again could be looked at. But structurally, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be, unless termites got in or something, I'm thinking it's going to be a minimum amount of work. And I think we could get this summer, we could get community members to go in, and I don't think there would be any charge other than materials. So that's my comments. Thank you. Jack. Good Maybe. <coughs> I just want to make a couple of announcements for TPOA. This is the uh, we're ending up our fiscal year and dues are due. And after 60 years of uh, our organization, we've had to raise it to the price of a hamburger and a prize, $35 per year per household. Uh, so I want to urge you to get your dues in uh, so we can start making our plans for the year and not in full budget together. And I also want to know that in the more thoroughly discussed in the newsletter, which I hope everyone receives. And I want to thank those who contributed to the newsletter um, to help us explain what, what's going on. Um, and um, I think that's about it. All I have to say is get your dues in for us. Thank you. Broadband, broadband. Are you going to talk about the internet? I don't think it needs any more, y'all. And um, it's in the record now, this memo. So, unless you want me to speak, I'll speak. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think it's. Uh, <laughs> 
Okay, hello. Um, I just want to uh, encourage the town council to support the planning board with budget if needed to um, feel a professional survey and have it analyzed. I think survey technologies have changed a lot in recent years, and I think that you'll be able to get, you know, really good data um, and sure you know, anonymity so people can say what they want to say and uh, have it analyzed. I don't think it's going to have to be the hairy deal it was before. Um, and with all due respect to our town attorney, Mr. Justice, um, honestly, uh, you want to, the thing you want to do is collect data, you know, systematically without bias. And that can be done. Um, and it uh, can be done electronically with a survey. So, I, I would I would suggest that the planning board do, do their market research and take a step back before winging it um, and make sure it's professionally done and it and it does not have to cost an arm and leg that does not have to take forever. So thank you. Thank you, Susan. Do we have any more public comments? Um, for announcements, um, I would like to say that uh, we'll get back on doing the paving bricks at the front entrance. I think some folks had not gotten in at the deadline to have an engraved brick. And so Bill Peel is going to check with the company that did these for us and we kind of need um what are we collecting the money for so maybe it can go for the guard shack <laughs> since we did the bricks for the other uh, things at the front entrance and also um roger carlton had said that the uh, lakeside had this stone eagle that they weren't using. So maybe there's some place that we can um, put the stone eagle up as well. So those are the comments on uh, bricks and, and front entrance. And also um, talking with Phoebe, uh, we need to be more inclusive with Lakeside and um, getting more involved in whether you have minutes from the HOA meeting, certain um, important items from your meetings, uh, let the council know and we'll include that in our meetings as well. So Lakeside's not just a whole separate entity, it's, it's part of the town. Regarding the bricks, mm -hmm. and the first round of course were for a full brick was $500, half brick was $200, so it makes sense. It should be $500-$250. Maybe. Can we, do, can we do that for this smaller round? Smaller brick is uh, more budget minded for a budget brick. So, um, uh, Ralph makes a good point. It would be more even if we had. Yeah. 250. Look at that. You can always step up two 250s to get your five in. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so. I've had a couple people ask me if it's too late. Yes. Never too late. There's a lot of um, blank papers out there that we could fill in. So. Uh, you if Bill Field will give me no. the name of the company. I believe that company's in Naples, Florida. I'll be there. I'll go talk to them. Are we interested? We want to know what if the price is still the same, right? We want a minimum amount of bricks too. That's not one or two. It's probably different. He can't hear me, can he? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, I'm sorry. I can, no, sorry. I can hear you. Um, I would like to remind you that that was a TPOA project that um, 
roots mining for those bricks and uh, TPOA was the, uh, pretty much the driver on that. Um, it would be fairly simple. I could give you a, it, it is a Tampa company, I could give you their name. That way, it, it would be pretty easy to get an update on, on the cost. Okay. Uh, by, by email. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Um, any other announcements? Um, our next regularly scheduled council meeting will be April 9th. Uh, it's Tuesday at 12 p.m. And um, motion to adjourn our meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.